Naomi, let's start with you. A number of testy exchanges, some very pointed questions from lawmakers, but Adam Masseri is certainly not Mark Zuckerberg and seems more comfortable in the room than his boss. What are your big takeaways? I mean, I think, look, it was really, we saw two very different pictures being painted about the effect uh, that Instagram has on young users and, and what Instagram is is looking to do about it. And so we saw Adam really, you know, offer a defense of, of the company's network. He said, you know, he thinks that some of the uh, controversies over its internal research are, are sort of essentially overplayed. He said the company plays a positive role in its... Um, you know, in the well-being of, of some young users, it, it widens the discussions around beauty. And he said, look, there's a number of things Instagram's doing to tackle things like uh, potential user addiction, to tackle things like problematic content. And, um, you know, that, that really this was an industry-wide problem, not uh, just a Facebook problem. But lawmakers were, were also very contentious. They said, look, it, Instagram needs to take more responsibility here for all these issues that we've been hearing about from from parents. Uh, there was a specific exchange with Senator Amy Klobuchar and Masseri about the time limits that Instagram is now offering to its users. Again, these are opt-in, so a user has to decide and choose uh, how much time they want to allow themselves to spend on the platform. Uh, the upper limit offer, be on offer, being three hours. Take a listen to this between Klobuchar and Masseri. You think three hours a day is an appropriate amount of time for kids to spend on Instagram? Senator. I'm asking this because just when you put out those new rules, that was an option for parents, three hours a day. Is that a good use of kids' time? I'm a parent, and I can understand that parents have concerns about how much screen time their kids have. I think that is, I think every parent feels that way. I ultimately think that it's a parent that a parent knows best what's best for their teen. So the appropriate amount of time should be a decision by a parent about the specific teen. If one parent wants to set that limit at 10 minutes and another parent wants to set that limit at three hours, who am I to say that they don't know what's best for their children? Adam, he's saying there that he believes the responsibility is on parents. Do you agree that parents should be making that decision or should big tech companies be giving parents better tools to set those limits? Well, I'm a parent too, and I definitely value all of the tools that tech uh, services, hardware and software have built over the last couple of years to give me more control. And so I don't know that I wouldn't let my kids uh, be on anything for three hours in terms of a screen. My kids are young. For older teenagers, maybe those um, rules might make more sense. I think that does speak to something that also came up with the hearing today, which is that we do need to have really probably different approaches for different ages of kids. Um, one of the most successful global norms that's emerged has been the United Kingdom's what they call age appropriate design code. And that's emerging as a bit of a global standard. And that's because unlike the US children's privacy law COPPA, which sets a rigid threshold at age 13, the UK design co code differentiates between younger kids, tweens, younger teens, and teens, uh, and gives, you know, kid uh, recommends uh, different um, levels of independence and parental control. So whether Congress acts or not, I think that, frankly, codes like that are going to continue to be the norm, and I think you're going to see more and more services like Instagram kind of designed to those recommendations. But, but, but is three hours really good for anyone, whether they're 13 or 25 or... 65. Is three hours really good for anyone to be spending on Instagram? I think that was really Senator Klobuchar's yeah. question. Yeah, and look, I think she has a good point. And frankly, you know, it may be that Instagram, after hearing that question, says, you know what, maybe that is a little high for uh, for the limit, the upper bound limit. These, these tools haven't rolled out yet. And it may be a good point of feedback for the company to say, you know, maybe that's a little high. Uh, there was another exchange between Senator Martha Blackburn and Marsha Blackburn and uh, Masseri about uh, the time that uh, he sat down with JoJo Siwa, the YouTube star, and she indicated that uh, she's been on Instagram since she was a young child. He said, I don't want to hear about that. Take a listen to that exchange with Senator Blackburn. At that moment, when you responded to her that you did not want to know, why didn't you use that as a teaching moment? Senator... I would say it was a missed opportunity. Indeed, it was a missed opportunity, and it sends the wrong message. It looked as if you were encouraging kids that want to be online stars to get on earlier. 
and to build their audience. This is a part of our frustration. You know, Naomi, he did ultimately admit that he was wrong there, but does it speak to the don't ask, don't tell approach these companies have had for far too long towards children? Look, I think Instagram, Instagram always started taking, you know, investing uh, its res technological resources to identify the true age of its youngest users at around you know 2019, and so you know the company hasn't been at that work for for that long. And one of the other things we also said saw Adam say you know at the hearing was he thinks this idea of identifying an, a user's true age that responsibility should also fall to some of the device makers that it that it was an industry-wide problem and so we saw him kind of you know dragging his feet there uh, curious Adam what your take is on that and the other things that uh, Masseri proposed one that the age uh, you know of the person using the device should be set at the device level and not per app you know this would then be a conversation I guess for Apple and other device makers or perhaps uh, regulators could you know make this law and he also suggested the idea of this outside body to set the rules what are your thoughts on his proposals look age verification for younger users is one of those problems that is just bedeviled tech services for for a long time, frankly, because there is not really a great way of doing it. Having said that, my understanding is that some of the, the companies that have tried this and had the most success are services like Xbox, where the age verification process is hardware level and it's on upon setup, where a parent has to be involved in the setup. And so the same principle certainly could be applied to a smartphone or, or other hardware devices. It would require industry collaboration. Frankly, I think it also could end up being a differentiator for whatever company chose to implement that technology uh, in terms of build, having really um, reliable age verification built in.